Hi guys, and welcome back to The Thoughtful Spot. This week we're going to be talking about something really serious. Depression. Now, I would like to do a shout out, first of all, to three different channels for inspiring this episode. The first of which is WatchCut. They did a video about self-harm a little while ago. I'll put the link below and I want you to check that out. I was watching that video thinking about my own experiences with self-harm. And I was thinking that it was about time that I opened up and talked about my own experiences and where I come from. Now the second video I would like you to watch is Matthew Santoro's new video, which I will also attach a link for. Uh, where he talks about the dark side of his life. Where he talks about the issues that he is dealing with and how he is asking us all if he is alone. And the third video I'd like you to watch is my personal solution, or at least a step on the way to a solution, by Justin Scard. I will also attach this link below. All three of these links will be found below. Uh, but it is called The Quest for Positivity, and it is where a man who has been through some hardships with marriage, who has been through some hardships financially, decides that instead of letting that weigh him down, he is going to make a decision, an active decision, to look for positivity in his life. This is The Thoughtful Spot. Thank you for joining me. Now, as we get started today, the question is, have you suffered with depression? If you have, a lot of what I'm about to talk about will make sense to you. If you have not, may not make that much sense, but I beg you, please watch this video in its entirety. You might learn something, you might gain a perspective you otherwise would not be able to grasp or understand. Now, Matthew Santoro, he did a video about how he has a dark side, about how he suffers with depression, how he has a hard time finding positivity and, and energy in every day. This is depression. I myself am a sufferer of manic depression and bipolar disorder. I have in the past suffered with versions of PTSD, uh, and I have suffered with grief. I have been through traumatic experiences. I was assaulted when I was 14 years old by an 18 year old woman. I had a hard time coping with that. I got into a lot of unhealthy relationships because of that. Those unhealthy relationships created mistrust, created hatred, and created depression. I would like to point out that not everyone has to go through traumatic experiences to have depression. Depression is not only a state of mind, but it is also a state of body. Your body can affect, your mind can affect, how you feel. So I would like to start with that today. Now, for those of you who are depressed, who are looking for help, the first thing I have to say to you is you are not alone. I am here. My email is below. If you are ever thinking about taking your life, self-harm, or just need someone to talk to, please feel free to shoot me an email. I would love to chat with you. The only thing I ask is please... If you contact me, be open to growing and changing. I do not mean to be harsh, but if you choose to be a victim, there is nothing I can do for you. And I would suggest that you seek a professional. I am not a professional. I have no degree. All I can do is talk to you. All I can do is offer insight. But if you'd like insight, and if you'd like to start working on yourself, please feel free to contact me. Now, talking about the second part of things. Everyone suffers with depression differently. As I said, there is a state of mind and there's a state of body that goes with depression. Again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist. This is my personal experience. But, if you want to start dealing with depression, I would say start with your body. Don't mess your mind up by trying to follow the standards other people have set for you. Now, if you're seeing a psychiatrist, do not let me contradict what they have to say. They are professionals. If they are telling you something, please, do what they ask you to do, or do what they recommend. A few years ago, well, back when I was 14, I attempted to kill myself multiple times. I was in such a dark place filled with just hatred, grief, and despair. I did not think there was anything worth living for. But when I came out of that moment, 
out of that time, the first thing I did was ask myself, what can I do to make myself feel better? Not feel better, but feel better. What can I do to give myself the strength to start taking a new stance? To start taking on a new perspective that I otherwise would not be able to do? I looked at my diet. I looked at my exercise. I looked at my sexual relationships. I looked at everything, and I decided I needed to work on dieting first. Because if you don't have a strong body, sometimes that can affect your mindset. If you're hungry, sometimes that can create anger. Sometimes that can create want. So for me, taking care of my body is a huge part of dealing with my depression. But I started dieting. Instead of eating McDonald's all the time, I am not a fan of McDonald's. I stopped eating uh, a lot of junk food, uh, a lot of candy, um, a lot of sweets just in general, uh, cake, pie, etc. First thing you can do is start dieting. Look at what you're eating right now and think about the phrase, you are what you eat. If you're eating something that is not healthy for you, you probably won't be healthy. Now there are dietary concerns for each person. Once again, consult your physician. Talk to them about what's going on with you and see if they have a diet they recommend. For me, I started eating fresh food. Things that were cooked right off the grill. So I was eating at home a lot. I was making my own uh, food. Not very well, but I was making my own food. I started eating salads a little bit more. I started eating uh, uh, sushi and, and, and uh, fish more. Um, I changed my diet. Now, bottom line is, I'm not going to give you my entire diet because I don't know if that will work for you. I don't want you to be like, oh, well, James said I should try this, and I'm going to try this because what works for me may not work for you. I cannot say that enough, but it worked for me. My diet improved. My energy level improved. My perspective started changing because now I had energy. Now I felt full all the time. Now I felt like I had take one step towards bettering myself. I felt successful, I felt ready. Because of that dietary change, my mindset started to change as well. Now, once I had my diet steadied out, the next step was to try and figure out what I needed to do, mentally. So, I started going to a gym and I started hanging out with some of my friends a little more. People that I had neglected because of my issues. This is high school still. I started running, I started uh, doing track, I started taking up martial arts a little bit more. I still, I never had a full dedication to martial arts, and I'll just be honest with you on that. Because of the situation with my family, because of some anger management issues I had, because of some friendships at school, because at the time that my father was teaching martial arts, we were not always on the same page. I did not do martial arts as much as I want to, and I recommend to anybody dealing with uh, confidence issues, anybody dealing with um, thoughts that they are worthless or thoughts that they are unsafe, please try martial arts. That's my advertisement for the day. But anyway, I started running, which really helped me. I built up my endurance, I built up my stamina, I built up my uh, confidence in myself. I was in shape, I was able to enjoy um, my relationships more, both romantic and otherwise, and that improved my next step, which allowed me to realize I am able to do something if I put my mind to it. I improved some of my friendships, not all of them, but I improved some of my friendships, and one of those friendships that really helped me through high school was Chris Kalstrom, who you have seen in my videos and who is still one of my greatest friends today. I was able to find in friendship and in sports that I could set a goal and I could accomplish that goal. So, I started with dieting to build my strength and I started building relationships and I started building my body so that way I knew I could accomplish something if I put my mind to it. Now, if you've gotten your mind to a place where you can start working on changing your perspective, my recommendation for you is to find something you believe in. Now, for me, this was Christianity. And as I grew and evolved, if you will, I began to drift away from that, uh, realizing that it was limiting uh, what I could do. Now, I'm not saying go out and find a religion. 
I'm not saying go out and become a hardcore Christian or become a hardcore atheist or an extremist in the faith of Islam or a hardcore Buddhist when you're in the park going <laughs> every day. But I am saying find something you can believe in passionately so you can start pursuing that thing. Because you've already proven that you can accomplish something for yourself. And I need to prove that you can accomplish something with others. Because the thing about the world is, it's not just a world where you can lock yourself in your house, sit there and watch Netflix, <laughs> and just and cry and eat ice cream. That's not the kind of world we live in. You do have to go out. You do have to get a job. You do have to accomplish something uh, in your lifetime. And the only way you can do that is if you can take and give. So, forgiving. Find something you believe in. I'm not saying you have to go and, and serve someone or donate all your money. But, go donate your time to a charity. Uh, see how that feels. Um, go find someone that you can spend time with and mentor. See how that feels. Uh, start a YouTube channel and share some of your feelings and get some feedback and work on self-improvement. That's what I'm doing. Just try finding something that you're passionate about. That can help you drive yourself forward for the time being. You've already, you've already gotten yourself to a point where you can accomplish things, where you have the energy to accomplish things. Now we're going to work on serving other people and serving the world around you. For me right now, that's YouTube. At the time, uh, it was building a relationship with my current wife. Without her, I don't think I could have taken the steps that I'm taking today. If you are going to pursue a relationship, um, and if you are going to put your faith into someone else, be very careful who you choose. People will fail you. People will not always be there for you 100% of the time. But make sure that when that person is not there, you're not so dependent on them where you can't function yourself. Okay, this is a balancing act that we're doing here. We're keeping ourselves healthy with energy. We're keeping our bodies in shape and proving that we can accomplish something with ourselves. Now we're putting our faith into something. So that means you have to keep both those two things along with that third thing if you're going to be able to move forward. This goes for anything. You need to make sure that you're in the right place because people will fail you and religion is run by people. Now, we're not on a rant about that, so we're going to go ahead and back up. We're dealing with depression today. I've explained to you some of the basic steps you can take by eating right, by exercising, and by finding something to believe in. You get to choose what those three things are going to uh, uh, have involved with them. And I encourage you to make sure you take the time to think very clearly about each step as you take it. Now, going to Justin Scard's video, The Quest for Positivity, The Origins of the Quest for Positivity, to be specific. He was going through a lot of things. Relationship issues, financial issues, moving issues, deciding what his future on YouTube was going to be. And he made a decision to pursue a quest for positivity you have to love yourself before you can love others I'm having a hard time loving myself but I have love for myself if that makes sense I love you all if you're watching this know I love you and I've already told you please contact me if you need to talk I may not be perfect I may be struggling but I am here for you too because the only way you can get through depression, and this is the point that I want to make with this first segment, the only way you can get through depression is with someone else. At the end of the day, you will stand alone. Always. People will die. People will fail you. You will stand alone. But right now, today, you are starting a journey. Right now, today, you are making a decision to pursue the quest for positivity. You do not have to start the quest alone. You should always be there for other people and you should always believe that other people will be there for you. Hope for good things because without hope, how can you pursue positivity? You need that hope. You will stand alone one day. Whether it's at home at night one night when you're struggling with your depression and you have a knife or a gun with you. Whether it's at the movies where you're sitting there watching a chick flick by yourself wondering if you're ever going to find love. Whether it's at a graveside of someone you've lost and you're remembering all the things that you had with them and realizing you will never have those things again. You will stand alone. But right now, today, you are not 
alone. I guess what I'm trying to say is there will be moments where you have a decision that you have to make by yourself. You are never alone in your struggle, but you will be alone in your decision process. And when you come to those moments where you have to make a decision, you need to make it alone and you need to make the right decision. Here's where we get into the second part of today's episode. Self-harm. WatchCut did a video about people who have hurt themselves. I want you to go watch that video. The link is attached below. I am a survivor of suicide. I was going through a very dark time in my life where I was losing a lot of people that I cared very much about. I lost my grandfather who was like my best friend. I lost my dog. I had to watch her die in my arms. I lost my aunt. I lost my uncle. I lost a lot of very close people to me all at once. Or at least that's how it seemed. And I couldn't believe that there was anything worth living for. So I tried to commit suicide. I tried to strangle myself. I thought about shooting myself. And at one point I even cut myself. I don't know if you can see it. But right here on my wrist, there's a cut. And how that happened is I was working at a friend of mine at one of my friend's houses. And they had a piece of metal on the wall and I was trying to get down a piece of equipment to work with. My hand came down on the piece of metal and I accidentally cut myself. And it hurt. But I liked the pain. So I lifted my hand off of this and I looked at, I could see all the way down to the, the layer underneath my skin. I don't know what that's called, but I could see down and I could see the, the, the strands and I could see the blood and it was starting to ooze out. And I enjoyed that feeling. I enjoyed, fe I enjoyed feeling something. And so I looked at that for a second and I took my hand and I put it back down onto this piece of metal. I did that two or three times before I went and I asked for help and I got it cleaned up. I came home that night and I had a metal knife that I had been thinking about using on myself many, many times before, but I had never had the courage, but I already had the injury. So my thought process was I can hide this, I can use this and I can do it here over and over and over again. So I took the knife and I held it right above my palm, right above my wrist, and I placed it into the groove. It was still fresh enough, I could do that. I stuck it in there, and I was about to pull it through, but I remember that the day before I'd had a conversation with a friend where he said, if you ever need anything, call me. I didn't call him. But I realized in this moment, after all these attempts of suicide, after all these attempts at self-harm, that I was not alone. And I had a decision to make. This is where my quest started. Because I had a decision to make, and it was either I continue hurting myself and crying for help in a silent and empty darkness where no one can hear me, or I decide that I'm going to hear my cry for help and I'm going to take an active role in saving myself. Now I've always been driven. So I could do this. And I started my journey by myself and it took a while before I could come out and say what I had done to some of my friends who supported me. But I started this journey by myself. And not everybody can do that. And that's why I say it's very important you have someone there to support you. And you reach out to somebody who can help you. Because even if ultimately you stand alone at a graveside or with a knife in your hand, these people are the people that will remind you that you are cared for, past or present, that you are worth something, and they will be reminders for you of why you need to continue on. Because at the end of the day, we are in a circle of life. What you do affects someone else. If you kill yourself, 
It will affect someone else. I'm not saying think about someone else because you need to think about yourself. If you hurt yourself, nobody may see it, but your, your emotions will reflect that you're in pain and it will rub off and it will hurt someone else. I'm not saying think about someone else. You need to think about yourself. You know, if you go and start getting into fights or street racing or whatever you do, you may get into an accident one day, you may get into an incident one day, and you may go to jail or you may destroy a relationship. And I'm not saying think about someone else, but I'm saying think about yourself. Because you are beautiful and you are loved. I know because I see you that way. I see you as beautiful. I don't know you, and I can't see you through this camera. You can see me. I can't see you. But I know because you have a heart that is beating, and because you are watching this video this far through, and because you want to improve yourself, that you are beautiful because you have a strong heart. Because you have a mind that works. And because you are breathing right now, that you are beautiful. That is all the requirements there is in this world. If anybody has anything else to say about that, Tell them to go screw themselves. And yes, they're beautiful too. Just in a very dark way. The reality is life is beautiful. You are what you decide to be. I love you. Because you are a member of my family, the human race. Pros and cons of self-harm. Pros. If you cure yourself right now, it's over. No more suffering, no more pain. Pros. If you cut yourself, someone might notice, and you might get the attention you long for. That you need. Pros. If you get into destructive relationships, you can feel alive. You can feel like you are going through something. You are experiencing something. Pros. If you survive suicide, you have proven you are a survivor. If you have survived an abusive relationship, you have proven you are a survivor. Pros. If you survive suicide, you are not alone. Because I have survived it as well. Cons? Life is the greatest adventure. If you end your life now, you will never see your future children. You will never see your grandchildren. You will never get to see the way that people grow and change around you. You will never get to see what your full potential is. Cons? If you hurt yourself, if you scar yourself... You may damage your chances for employment someday, for a job you really want. If you hurt yourself right now, you will have scars that will last you forever. And you have to explain to your children. And you don't have to be ashamed. They can be a battle scar. But how hard will that be for you? I don't know because I haven't had to explain that to my daughter yet. But I will someday. Cons. If you get into an abusive relationship... You are not getting the love you deserve. Cons. You are not living life to your fullest. If you hurt yourself. If you kill yourself. You deserve great things. I believe in you. I love you. If you need me. Email me. I am here. Matthew Santoro. You are not alone. Justin Scard, you are not alone. Megan McCarthy, you are not alone. Lily Singh, you are not alone. Adam the Woo, you are loved more than you know. And if you do know, just know you're not alone. And to all my viewers out there, you are not alone. This has been A Thoughtful Spot with James Hahn. Reach out to me if you need me, please. You are not alone.